The task of installing a student version of Maya opens up a whole world of questions. To actually install Maya 2020 for free as a student, see the link in the description below. So question one, I photoshopped the dates in my letter to make them look more recent and it was accepted. Will anyone find out? Okay, so that's both against the terms and conditions and don't forget that forgery is a crime and all that. I've not personally heard of any cases where individuals have gotten in trouble with Autodesk. However, I do know of small companies that have had multiple workstations using pirated software that were found out. They were forced to pay for full licenses, but were given a discount to help. Let me just say this clearly, as a teacher, public servant and YouTuber, I do not condone software piracy or document forgery or anything illegal in any way. Question two, is this the full version? Yes, this version of Maya for students has absolutely all of the features that Maya 2020 has when someone like Pixar will go to install it on their computers before they add on all of their own plugins and extensions. Can I sell stuff that I make in this student version? No, again, this is against the terms and conditions and more importantly, when you open or import a mesh made in a student version of Maya on a professional paid version of Maya, it comes up with this giant message saying that it was made in a student version. Even if it's a very small mesh in a file that was originally made on a pro version, every time that professional user goes to open or save their scene, they will get this message. If you do this, your Turbo Squid and other 3D sales accounts will likely be terminated. There are of course ways around it, but I can't put my channel or real life job at risk by explaining how. Will there be a watermark in renders on the student version? All still static renders are watermark free. Animations rendered through batch render will have an Arnold watermark like this, but to avoid this, just simply render using the render sequence command. The render sequence function will render frame by frame, just like batch render, and these will not have a watermark. So make of that what you will, but again, any work done for profit is against the terms and conditions. How much will it cost after the student license runs out and I have finished school? So I've noticed that quite a lot of other YouTube videos are throwing around numbers like $2,000 a year and £235 a month and threatening to give Maya all up and go on over to Blender. But bear in mind that Maya has quietly released an indie pricing version, which I've linked to in the description below. You can see here, this is the same full product as the student and industry versions, but only costs £20 a month which is the same as Photoshop. It's still a lot of money, but to afford a full year, that's just about a week's worth of six hour shifts at McDonald's on a minimum wage here in the UK. So it's not that bad. Also put into context how much things like textbooks alone cost for university students doing something like an engineering degree or art supplies for a fine art degree or something like that, which could run into thousands of pounds a year. Um, as well as the fact that when I was at uni in 2009, Maya cost £5,000 for a copy, no matter if you were a humble student or if you are Pixar themselves, it cost £5,000. Students back then managed using a method that I'm not allowed to talk about here and a method that seems now almost entirely lost on a generation raised on streaming services where infinite entertainment is only mere seconds away. Now, the indie version says that it is for a limited time only, although I pray to the Mayan gods that it continues forever. It's also not available everywhere. What a racially diverse list of nations you have right here, Autodesk. You seem to have forgotten a little country called India, which accounts for the majority of my channel's views and would therefore earn the award of being the country trying the hardest to learn Maya. Uh, why aren't you offering them a discount? Why can't you just show us how to get Maya for free like you did in the olden days at uni? First, I never actually said that I did. Second, YouTubers are not very anonymous. You can see our faces, you know our real names, and 
so can the places that we work and the software that we use. I desperately want you guys to learn how to be amazing artists, but I also desperately want to not get fired from my job as a teacher. To discuss such things, go to places where people have names like Wednesday Wolf 44, Old Man Beast Master 96, and Old One Had My Name In It. So please guys don't discuss it here, I will have to delete the comments. Freedom of speech is less of a thing when you're a teacher. Will I be forced to pay when the trial runs out, like one of those VPNs or the Amazon Prime free trial? No, you didn't enter your credit card details anywhere, so you won't be charged. What happens when the license runs out after a year? You should get a 30 day warning and if you want to buy more time after that you can reinstall Maya with a trial license for another 30 days. This should give your school time to write a new letter or for you to, you know, work, work out something else. What happens to all my Maya files after the license or trial runs out? So you save all of your Maya files onto your local computer. This is not cloud-based and you can open these in any other version of Maya, whether it's an indie version or a professional version or another student version. If you make something in Maya 2020 and you want to open it in Maya 2018, you might have some difficulty there. If you want to open up a file that you made in Maya 2020 in an older version of Maya, simply save the file as an ASCII file or as an FBX. I have links for how to do this in the description below. If you're at the end of school and don't want to pay for Maya anymore or, you know, then you should prepare your files to open in something else like Blender, which is free, but not widely used in the industry. Near the end of your license period, I would start converting all of your Maya files to FBX files, which will open in anything. So an FBX file is like a JPEG or something that will open up in pretty much any 3D application. So you could then transition over to Blender for free. Why don't you just use Blender? Because it's free. While I've not used Blender all that much, from what I've seen, it's great and a bit more user friendly than Maya. For someone in their first three to five years of using 3D software, you would probably find that it has pretty much all the same tools as Maya and you'll be able to create some incredible work. However, the majority of big VFX and game studios use Maya. For them, the software cost is such a small drop in the water compared to everything else that it's not worth them changing. Maya has been so deeply integrated into every part of their production pipelines and their production pipelines have been so carefully considered in the development of Maya that changing it out for Blender would be like trying to do a heart transplant with a heart of an animal from a different species. Even if it's a really cool animal like a snow leopard, everyone would, would just die. Most of the jobs you'll be applying for will be using Maya, but if you get good enough, you can create a portfolio made through Blender almost entirely. And as long as in your CV or resume, you say that you've worked in Maya in the past, you will have no problem landing a job in the VFX or games industries and will quickly be able to adapt your skills and software knowledge back over to Maya because most of the features and terminology in both softwares are the same. What system requirements do I need? Surprisingly, very little if you're doing basic modeling. Remember that websites like Sketchfab can even open on your phone and you're looking at really detailed 3D models on there. So if you're doing basic modeling, I've seen Maya run fine with small scenes on 50 pound Core Duo laptops with four gigabytes of RAM. And while they struggle to run Photoshop, Maya seems to be okay. However, the absolute minimum requirements I would say should be any Intel i3 processor or equivalent, four gigabytes of RAM and a 250 gigabyte hard drive. This should cost about 80 to 100 pounds on eBay, even if it's a laptop, although I'd highly recommend getting a PC tower instead. Once you start rendering UV mapping or doing simulations on this computer though, you will lose the will to live due to instability and an incredible amount of lag. For a smooth experience, I would recommend at least a 2015 fifth gen i5 processor or higher and eight gigabytes of RAM. Maya really doesn't use much more than that for most stuff and any, and this is really important, Nvidia 
GTX graphics card. Maya is designed primarily for Intel processors and Nvidia graphics, as most of the world's visual effects industry and quite a lot of the games industry is based off of Intel Xeon processors and Nvidia Quadro graphics. So the i series processors and GTX graphics cards share a lot of the same DNA as their more powerful siblings made by the same company, so are, in my experience, just as stable. AMD-based components will work fine on the surface for a whole lot less than Intel and Nvidia, but when you go under the hood in areas like UV mapping and things like that, you can start seeing some serious performance or stability issues, although I think Autodesk are slowly working on that. I got Failed error, 1603. If you get an error while downloading, it's probably you. It's probably your home network's fault. You might want to try restarting the router or putting a paper clip in that little hole in the back of it so it does a proper hard reset. You can try turning it off for like 12 hours as well and then doing the little paper clip trick and it hopefully would improve. If not, you might need to go to a friend's house or to take your computer to school or something like that. Um, I've installed my hundreds of times on my own and on students' computers at school and I've never had a problem with the download. My 30-day trial ended. I uninstalled Maya, deleted every Maya-related folder and registry file, and when I reinstall it, it still knows that the 30-day trial is over. What's going on? Yep, so I'm afraid that's how all software trials go. Windows and Mac operating systems are designed with this in mind so that they remember things like this. The only way is to do a full wipe and reinstall of Windows on your computer. Or of course, get an indie license or, or you know. My acceptance letter or document that I scanned in for verification was rejected. What do I do? So first, the photo of your document might just suck and be all blurry. Use the free Adobe scan app on your phone in a well-lit room to scan it in or scan it in at school. And if that's not the problem, then it might be something to do with the content of the document itself. So you might need to get your school to write another document for you, similar to this one that I've got for you in the description below. It needs to include your name, the school's name, and a date from within the past year. From what I've seen, it can be any date mentioned on the letter. If you had a letter three years ago that said you would be graduating on a specific date in this year, Autodesk's automated text recognition software seems to prioritize the later date over the older ones. I obviously can't guarantee this. Okay, I think that's it. So I did make this list by trawling through all my school emails and looking at comments on similar YouTube videos. But if you have any questions that don't involve you know what, then please ask below and I will do my best to help.